Hey guys, it's Michelle here. I just wanted to do this quick uh, voiceover before the video begins because this video is long. It does get a little ranty, okay? <laughs> and I posted this morning asking people, you know, are you ready to hear this? Do you want to see a video like this? And pretty quickly someone, you know, wasn't a surprise to me, popped up and said, well, can't you just put it in a very nice way? And first of all, that would require me to re-record a 45 minute video. Uh, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> it's either it gets posted or it doesn't. And I've decided to go ahead and post it. But this person wanted me to basically sugarcoat things. And then when I pointed that out, she said, no, it's not sugarcoating. It is sugarcoating when people are out there just saying, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Energetically, what's happening here is we are learning our lessons. And if we do not learn those lessons, we will repeat them. And I'm going to liken this to, God forbid, if anybody got sick and having to be, you know, in the hospital, do you want your doctor leaning over you, patting your hand going, just be positive, love and light. Think positively and you'll heal. No, you're going to be like, doctor, you better go get me some medicine. You better go get me a ventilator. But your biggest question is going to be, why? How did this happen to me? That's the same kind of thing that's going on with all of this energetically. And if we don't observe and process what we're supposed to be learning, this will repeat. So I made this video. I had a lot to say. Again, it's long. <laughs> if you make it all the way to the end, you might be my favorite person in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I get it. So just bear that in mind as you're listening. I full on expect people who are very self-centered, narcissistic people, um, you know, the, the types that I'm kind of talking about in this video to get very offended by this and I have a job to do. So I just need to carry forward and if people get sensitive about it, um, my intention is not to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want anybody hurt, but I want us all to learn and I want us all to be aware because otherwise this is going to slam us again. All right, on to the video. Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. And as promised, I will be putting up extra content. I explained in another video that when all of this uh, illness started happening, I very quickly started to batch film the weeklies. Reason why I did that was if I can get those recorded, edited, loaded, no matter what happens, I have content for you. <laughs> but what that means is that I was tapping into an energy that felt appropriate to bring to you for each one of those weeks. But now, as we see things playing out, here and there I can put up a little extra, uh, it's not a reading, but a little extra video to just address some of the things that we're all experiencing right now. And I will be doing a meditation video to help us be calm, to be centered, um, to remember what's important, you know what I mean? To clear, um, can you see my little fireplace in the back? Is that soothing at all? I don't know. Am I in the way here? Let me, let me move that. Is that, <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, but anyway, I wanted to get on and record this video because I've seen some very interesting things. And I think it's important that we, if we're going to learn our lessons, we need to be observing everything and processing it and taking it in. If we don't do that, we're going to continue to have issues, okay? As of the recording of this video, people, at least around me, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, but people around me, yes, you have these really, you know, kind, considerate people, and then you have people just sort of acting out. There was a neighbor that just opened and slammed their door, I don't even know, like seven times. And when I say slam, I mean like trying to slam their door. There's all this commotion outside where I think people are rushing to make things happen and there's chaos. There is absolutely chaos. So, yeah, <laughs> so that is happening. And I was hearing some very beautiful, promising news where some of these restaurants that have been closed down, they're now turning their restaurants into soup kitchens, um, you know, for people who are hungry and still need food and what have you. Uh, there are, you know, examples of neighbors stepping up and helping their elderly neighbors uh, keep a watchful eye on the kids because now some of them 
have to be around troubled homes because they're home right now. So we're, we're all kind of just watching out for one another for the most part. Now, if you've noticed, there have been notifications going out. I know I've been getting a ton of them from the airlines, from credit cards, from, you know, stores, from grocery stores, from, you know, all these things. And a lot of them are very, you know, supportive and they're meant to be informative. Here's what we are doing. Here's what you need to be made aware of. And then I get (laughs) this notification from my property management. I live in an apartment complex and our notice was you know, amid all of this, you know, chaos, please know that your rent is still due on the first and you will be charged late fees if you are late. Also, please, please, please do not come into the office. There was no talk about mobilizing the complex to help our neighbors. There was no talk of we're here for you, but please, if you can, you know, just do your communication via email or phone. Uh, You know, there was nothing of the sort. There was no offer of support Maybe, you know, maybe some of the elderly neighbors, maybe they pay their rent traditionally by taking a check-in because they're not comfortable with using online stuff. Or maybe they don't have a computer. You know, just because we live a certain existence doesn't mean everybody else does. (laughs) And we need to honor our elders. And P.S., it's one of the big lessons that we're learning here. There's no respect for our elders. And I was thinking about it today, you know, there's a certain generation that came out and it suddenly became, you know, all about selfies and, you know, our older generations, they don't know anything. Their life experiences, whatever. We're the ones that are going to save the world. And, you know, this was amped up by the parents of that generation who were going, my children are the greatest. They're going to save the world. And then all of a sudden here comes this thing of, hey, boomer. Hey, boomer. And and it's basically anybody who's above the age of 25 is considered, you know, being called a boomer in a derogatory sense. This is unacceptable. You are not allowed to be ageist (laughs) and still, uh, you know, try to present yourself as someone who's super woke. Those boomers that everyone is, you know, degrading, not everybody, but a lot of people are degrading. We're now seeing something that wakes us up and makes us appreciate the older generation. They're not, they're not even old. I mean, there are some elderly people out there, of course, they're, you know, hitting 90, <laughs> you know, I mean, but I don't consider 60 something to be old, especially in this day and age. That's not old. That's almost, you know, <laughs> it's not quite middle age, but you know, uh, it's, it's not old. And, you know, we have to start honoring and and bring attention to the needs of our elderly and to start honoring their experiences. Well, the boomers are to blame for everything, right? They're the ones that let the government get like this. They're the ones that let society get like this. You're offended? I don't care. Nice to meet you. My name is Michelle Patterson. Watch some of my other content before you comment, okay? Just know who you're dealing with. (laughs) But I think this is definitely getting us to pay attention. Their experiences are things that most of us couldn't couldn't fathom. I mean, there are some people out there who are old enough. Maybe they were, you know, just children at the time. But they remember a lot of wars, okay? A lot of the people that get that term thrown at them in a derogatory way, they're either Vietnam veterans or... They lived through Vietnam. They lived through the 60s. Could any of you handle the 60s? I don't know if I would have done so well back then. Okay, I, what, you know, it was a lot, it was a big, huge time of change and turning the corner and trying to, you know, see our mistakes. I wasn't alive in the 60s, calm down, okay? Um, I didn't come along until, you know, late 70s. So everybody calm down. Uh, but again, we, we sort of diminish our past generation's experience. And we hear things like, oh, education is more expensive than it's ever been. If you take what I paid in my education and you add the inflation, it about equals what y'all are paying now. 
okay? <laughs> I still had to pay for my education. I had to work three jobs for my undergrad. I had a full-on corporate job while I was getting my master's. It wasn't easy. And I'm still paying on my master's degree because it was expensive. I went to a, an art school in New York City. <laughs> so it was, it was very pricey. We are being taught to start honoring other people's experiences. Now, what some of you might argue is like, well, no, some of the older generation, they're very resistant to change. Yeah. And it's holding us back. Eh, I mean, maybe you still can live the way that you want to live. But what's really bothersome, and I, again, I think this is very related to what we're experiencing right now. This is like a, a terrifying thing that's waking us up. Okay, you know what? Let's let the first hour of a store opening when they're freshly stocked and sanitized, let, let the elderly people go do their shopping. And if they can't make it during that first hour, maybe we can go and do some of their shopping for them and leave it on their doorstep. Whatever needs to be done, right? But remember, we would not be able to finish out anything societally if the people who came before us didn't learn those lessons and make history so that we could learn from it. We wouldn't be anywhere without our older generations. And the fact that we don't honor the people who came before us, I, I have no words. I have no words. Not to mention some people out there who look at Gen Xers as old, okay? Well, you didn't do anything. We had to come and correct all your mistakes. Boomers, we're having to come along and correct all your mistakes. <sighs> I'm gonna tell a story. I lived in Columbus, Ohio. I was going to Ohio State University and it has a very large LGBTQ plus community there. At least it did back when I lived there. And a lot of my friends were of that community. We would end up going out to the clubs, okay? Which wasn't great for my dating life, but you know, it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> go there and dance and whatever. And we were friends with a, uh, a trans woman. And she would always tell us, you guys go ahead and go to the car. I'll meet you there. And we never really figured out what she's, you know, at first we didn't catch on to what she was doing. Like, come with us. No, 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 you guys go. And we thought, you know, she, she found somebody she liked or something like that. And we would go on out to the car. And then we discovered the reason why she would send us to the car first was because every time we ever went out anywhere to have some fun, when she came out of the club, there was a chance that someone would kill her. You think I'm kidding? I saw one incident. <sighs> there were these guys in a pickup truck that came flying up as the club was letting out, screaming horrible things. And they had guns. Now you would think the police would be around to do something about this. I never saw them. Police, I mean, I know there are beautiful police officers out there. I know there are really bad police officers out there, like anything. This woman wanted to send us ahead so that we wouldn't be a part of getting threatened for being around her. Now, I didn't go through that. She went through that. But she was a few years older than me. That is the existence. And that's just from my little part of the generation. Forget about all the people who, you know, grew up in the 60s and, and the various things that, the awful things that were happening to people then and how they had to experience that so that we could get at least here. You know, not that we're like, not that we've made it, but, you know, get a little forward, make a little progress. Those are the people that came before you. A lot of people had to die, be diminished, get stepped on, get harassed, get abused. And you know what? I bet some of those generations are tired. 
they went through it. And I'm not saying that that stuff doesn't still happen today. Of course it does in, in one way or another. But I think we're being taught, as I've been saying throughout this entire video, to appreciate our elderly and to appreciate any generation that came before you. I know when I was young, it was very easy to look at my parents' generation and be like, oh my God, you still don't get it. <laughs> right? But eventually you have to grow up and look back and go, well, okay, I understand that you want to stay where you are. <laughs> um, you know, again, it's, it's their mode of safety. And we don't know where that need or the need for the sense of safety really comes from. Like how amplified is that? We don't know what each individual's experience was. Okay. Now, people love to argue. People love to offer the other side of things. And they'll say, well, that generation was super racist. That generation hated women. That generation was ba 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 ba. Humans have to evolve, okay? We are still in a hot mess right now with making sure everybody is treated fairly and equally. There's still a lot of hate in this world. And certainly we want to evolve from all of that, of course. Let's, let's not play, let's not dumb down the conversation here. Obviously we don't want to go back to some of what was considered normal back in the day. My point in talking about this is to learn to open up and see how far we've come, learn from the history makers, honor them, help them out at this time, watch out for the kids, because again, a lot of them are, a lot of them are the Phoenix generation. They're the ones that are gonna rise from the ashes. And they're sensitive. They're more sensitive than any, any being we've seen so far. And they are the ones, you know, a lot of them are empaths. And as we know, uh, if you guys don't know, I, this is a spiritual channel if you're just joining me. <laughs> so we talk about some spiritual things here. Um, but, you know, the empaths, we do tend to choose uh, life paths that put us in these circumstances that, you know, good luck getting through that. Right. So we want to watch out for the kids. We want to make sure that they are protected. And if you're still sitting here listening to this going, what in the world does this have to do with anything? If you want to be woke and consider yourself woke, you got to open your eyes and you have to open your heart. I'm not even sure if I completed out this thought, but uh, from the beginning of the video, I got a notification from my apartment complex. Instead of saying, hey guys, we're here for you. Out of an abundance of caution, let's have all communication be via email or phone. Please pay your rent online. As of now, it's still due by the first. We will keep you posted. Let's help out our neighbors. It was nothing of the sort. It was the rent is still due, as I've said. Please, please, please stay away from us. They're not on the front lines. Yeah, but they still have to sit in an office. They're lucky to be able to sit in an office right now. A lot of people out there do not have any income for the time being. Or they have diminished income. And there's nobody looking for apartments right now. So they're not showing apartments. I have walked into, previously, I've walked into that office to see them just sitting there gossiping. They're not on their computers taking care of things. They're not taking phone calls. They're not showing apartments. They're not doing anything but just sitting there chatting with one another. I've gone in when they've been doing that and said, hey, I have a package in the back. No, you don't. They don't even get up to check. They act like you're a bother. Hey, uh, the pool isn't open. It's locked. You just need to pull up on the handle. Okay, I've been here longer than you have, office manager person. I know how to open the gate. It's locked. Well, they're probably treating it with chemicals right now. You can't go in there, which was a lie. You know, they're just, they don't want to get up and do anything. We have those people around. Now, if you're going, okay, again, what does this have to do with what's happening? Everything. Watching how someone's, see, all that other stuff, it annoyed me, but it never really made me realize who I was dealing with until now. This is going on and your focus is just about you as if you're a nurse or a doctor or, you know, any kind of medic 
first responder. That got me thinking of all the other stuff. That got me waking up to how the whole community has responded. Again, we have our really good people out there, but not everybody's on on board with this. I'm going to do my best here in my career until the day I die to offer what I can, and that is insight and perspective. It's going to be up to y'all if you want to listen to it or not, if you just want to fight or you don't even want to consider it because you're so conditioned. I'm going to do what I can, and then one day when it's my time, I'll leave this earth, and I am going to beg and plead to never come back here again. This is exhausting to offer a perspective and have everybody's conditioned shadow selves want to fight, just to fight. I was talking to somebody, and they were talking about uh, the president's response to all this. And we got on the talk of the election. And pretty quickly, I was getting diminished for my thoughts on it. Why is this happening? Why do you think? We are being cracked open. This will not be the last pandemic we have, guys. And we don't even have, we, we still have, we haven't gotten to the natural disasters yet. That's coming in the summer, going into the fall. Unless we change something. That doesn't mean egotistically saying, oh, I'm a spiritual practitioner, so I'm going to put good, you know, I'm going to be the one to save the world. There are people who act like that. And they're not, they're not actually connected into their heart. They're not actually doing things for the right reasons. We need to start having a light code intelligence. And when I say a light code intelligence, I mean the very essence of your soul living in your physical cells, opening up little perceptors. Okay. <laughs> However you want to see it, you know, you put it, whatever image you want around it, but That's the best way I can think to put it. To not just be, oh, I'm clairvoyant. Why just clairvoyant? I don't know. It's the gift I have. Okay. Well, you're more gifted than that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You're more gifted than that. We're going to be getting, we've already uh, sort of upgraded. Okay. We've upgraded a little bit here. Um, That's not going to pick up on the mic, I don't think, unless they get closer. There's, I said there's chaos outside. For some reason... I haven't even bothered to go outside and look to see if they started construction. We've gotten no notification of construction, but maybe there's construction happening. I don't know. There's just all kinds of things going on um, and nobody's communicating. See, communication is very important too. But what I'm getting at here is that we've already sort of uh, integrated and upgraded in our physical form. Now our, our means of perception, okay, our means of perception doesn't have to be sort of singled out as clairvoyant or clairaudient or clairsentient and blah, 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 you know, all these things. It doesn't have to be that. It can be all of them happening at once with no need to explain it. I got on Facebook a couple of days ago and pretty immediately somebody came and said, are you going to channel the angels or what? <laughs> um... <laughs> We, we get into this perception that things have to look a certain way and we're leaving no room for recognizing that we are growing. Haven't you noticed? I'm, I'm not saying I would never go back to auto writing because that's a fun way to bring messages through or to close my eyes and get a clear message. But if you've noticed a lot of the weeklies, you know, I, I'm just talking. Why can't I do that? Because we don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from the angels. How do you know you're not hearing from the angels? You've got it in your head that it looks a certain way. It has to be this. Yeah. And you thought you had to go to work Monday through Friday. You can't do that now. You thought you could go out and be amongst the people. You can't do that now. You thought you would always have a steady paycheck. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have to find a different way. Let me correct that. We're going to take out maybe. We all have to find a better way. We are all changing in how our financial system is, how we approach work, how we approach family, 
kids are supposed to be home now. I made another video where kids were still out and about and whatever, but, um, you know, maybe they're taking that because I don't hear as many kids outside right now. So maybe they're taking it a little more seriously, but you know, we're being asked to try a different way. And because we can't see what's ahead, we think that automatically equals danger. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to. We are discovering our resilience. Ah, uh, I made, I think it was in the Facebook post too, where I said something like, um, we're going to have to make our own bread, guys. We're going to have to make our own soup. <laughs> and then I go to the grocery store. There is no active dry yeast anywhere to be found on, at the store. I tried to order some online. I, <laughs> it's fine. I'll make soda bread. It's, it's all good. I got some Irish ancestry. I can do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was like, oh, people are actually, <laughs> maybe they are making their own bread. And why aren't they sharing? My neighborhood had better smell like fresh baked bread. Okay, uh, that's all I'm saying. But, <laughs> but we are being asked to try a different way. Maybe try to have a little compassion. Now, it's hard. It's hard. Listen, guys, I'm on the internet. You think I, you think I don't have people coming forward and criticizing my every word and trying to dissect it. And I really truly believe that this is sort of a human thing where people just have to play devil's advocate all the time. And I'm all for offering a different perspective, but you can do so lovingly and respectfully. Anybody's ever done that, you get a beautiful response from me. When you come in with your attitude and acting like you're right and trying to prove that I'm wrong, I'm not going to respond well to that because I don't understand why humans do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm an alien. I don't know. <laughs> if disclosures come, it's going to have to land on my head because I don't get it myself. But, like, <laughs> but what I'm getting at here is that we need to change how we see things. I, d does it make sense to anybody that in the middle of a crisis where people are dying, that people would be like, okay, rent is still due on the first. I'm not saying get free rent. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm not even saying that you have to move your due date. Can you be a little more compassionate about it? <laughs> like, why aren't we, you know, I, I'm trying to offer what I can to people. Um, but it just seems like everyone's confused. Everyone's confused about, and, and that's understandable. These are very confusing times. But helping one another shouldn't be this confounding. Hoarding things. Uh, not that you guys care about this, but maybe I can just say it anyway. Um, when I started seeing that people were hoarding, and this was way back before, um, I don't think anything had even hit Colorado. I think it was like they just found their first case in the United States. And then there was stuff on Facebook about how Costco had been wiped out of toilet paper. And I, I was just watching this whole thing unfold and just tired just tired. You know, we come here, we do our best, but if no one's listening or worse, let's talk to the, the spiritual practitioner community here for a moment, because a lot of you are spiritual practitioners. So let's talk about that. Um, you know, we, we will have that sense of this is what we've been training for our whole lives. And you are correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are correct. Okay. Not only that, but you know, people who are out there going, Oh my God, I can't be around my friends. I can't hang out at the bars. I'm like, people still do that. <laughs> I don't know. I've been living the digital era quite a bit, maybe too much. I don't know, but this is just, you know, business as usual, except I can't, you know, go to like, I might go to the garden of the gods or I might head over to the zoo. And I only go to those two places because they're beautiful. Uh, and also I can, I can meditate. I can connect to nature uh, with the zoo, I love the animals over there, even though the zoo is kind of on my last nerve these days, but they're getting better-ish. I mean, it's been kind of better the last couple of times I've gone, but like, that's just an aside. But the reason why I go to those places is to get exercise and to connect to nature, right? That, that's how my life has changed. I think as we go on, there is going to be, you know, a lot of pressure for us to have the answers. There's going to be a lot of pressure for us to tune in because people think they can't do it for themselves. Guys, I mean, I'm here as a support system. I'm 100% like, you know, it's it's like a nurse stepping up and going, give me my mask and my hazmat suit. I'm, I'm going in because that's what I've been training for. I think a lot of us are like, <laughs> okay, we're not that, okay? We're not putting ourselves in danger to help other people necessarily. But, um, you know, I, I think there's definitely a sense of, 
turn on that camera. <laughs> give me the microphone let me meditate let me but i think the best way to do that is just to produce content meditations um having little chats like this i tried to go live guys it doesn't work okay <laughs> so we'll just do that i can premiere this and uh live live chat right so i'll be there on the chat watching your comments and stuff and responding and what have you but but i think there are some practitioners out there who are going to get now it's going to get sticky and hang with me please don't allow that pendulum thinking to start coming here try to try to stick with what i'm saying here okay turn on your compassion turn on your empathy uh i think there's going to be a lot of pressure to give free readings for example i said this a long time ago i stopped checking facebook messages and i stopped checking instagram because 99 percent of the time it's someone who, listen, the people who have something really serious going on and they can't afford a reading, I, I will work something out with them, okay? I don't turn my back on anybody who's really in need. I've done suicide prevention uh, interventions. Um, I, I've helped people. And I'm not saying this, so I'm like, look how great I am. I'm not saying that. I just, I, I want to be honest about and kind of lay it out there. Um, I've helped people feel okay about getting therapy. Um, and the biggest part of my job is to help people feel okay with having faith and with being in touch with their souls and to, um, feel okay to maybe touch the face of something unseen. I guess then by its very nature, it doesn't have a face, but I'm trying to be poetic here. Okay. <laughs> that master's degree in writing should come in handy in one way or another. Maybe I hit the mark. Maybe I missed the mark whatever the deal is. But, um, <laughs> but getting back to the messages, a lot of times it's people with, you know, um, an energy where they're very much cycled around and sort of being tortured by their own ego consciousness. And it's causing hurt. It's causing pain. Now, this is a tough one. Listen to me, spiritual practitioners and anybody for that matter, because we all deal with somebody. We're always helping in one way or another, right? Um, we can sense their pain but sometimes you're interfering with their life's path by giving in. Okay, so I, this is getting sticky because y'all are going to be like, my child, you're talking about being, you know, like helpful and all that stuff. And then you're saying, listen to what I'm actually saying. Don't jump to conclusions about what I'm saying. Hang with what I'm actually saying. We'll get to it. I'm trying. Okay, it's kind of hard to get this out and explain this in words. But when somebody comes and they're trapped in the ego cycle, Michelle, I'm so scared about what's going on in the world. Understandable. And I think my boyfriend is cheating on me. I mean, he said this thing to me the other day that really made me mad. And blah, 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 blah. So they're coming not with like, hey, Michelle, I just lost my job and I'm terrified. That's a different thing. Okay. That's a different thing. Uh, but somebody who's, you know, kind of swirling around in their ego, they're not going to hear any message that you have for them anyway, unless you were, the reading is meeting them in that space. Does that make sense? I don't know if I can actually put this into words. Um, in my case, I do angelic readings, which are very deep. Okay. We go soul deep. And yeah, we can start to bring some resolution to surface level questions. But not without a lot of consideration. We don't put a band-aid on things. We look at the root. And then when you walk away, you have homework. You sure do. And that's not very fun for some people, <laughs> right? Because some people are like, man, you just gave me homework. I, <laughs> I know. But, um, but at least you will walk away having come through a rite of passage where you have, um, you've, you've come, you came, you saw, you endured, you figured it out. You're coming on out of it now. And now you can start a new chapter. That's the kind of thing that we do. So if somebody comes and they're just swirling in their ego, and they have a, maybe a sense of entitlement. They think the world owes them something. Um, everybody should, you know, this is a time of crisis. You should just give me your time. Those people aren't even going to hear what you have to say. As a matter of fact, if you open yourself up, they may blame you for what's happening in their world. What I want to get at here is that for especially spiritual practitioners in times of crisis, there will be people who try to take advantage of that. Okay. We already live in a world where if you are an empath, your energy gets sucked out quite a bit. And, uh, 
anytime you try to reserve some of that for you, because you have your bills to pay. And if you um, are a spiritual practitioner who charges for readings, that's probably a big part of your income. A big part of my income is readings and ad revenue. Um, when somebody donates to Patreon, it takes care, it goes towards, my, my health care is very expensive as a self-employed person, but it goes towards that and helps with that. Um, but yeah, as far as like food, utilities, rent, you know, being able to live, paying for all the things that it takes to keep this business running, I do have to depend on personal readings and um, ad revenue. So I think it's going to be a time for spiritual practitioners to get really good at figuring out who's just trying to take advantage. It's going to be tough, guys. It's going to be so tough. Who's just trying to take advantage because they think the world owes them something and they're really an energy vampire and who really needs help? Who's really scared here? Okay. So recently I have had my Facebook messages, um, oh God, Instagram messages, my email box is filling up with people who are going, I'm not asking for a reading, but here's the situation that's going on in my life. Can you tell me what you think? That's a reading. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if I'm not being clear on that, or if you're not quite what, sure of what I'm trying to get across here, leave your comments down below. Do not be defensive. Do not, don't be combative. We can have a conversation here. Okay, being cruel to one another is not it, but having some hard discussions, offering perspectives, what do we need to observe here, you know, what can we learn from all of this, that's, that's where I would like to see this energy, okay? Um, <laughs> did I mention we also have a blizzard coming in? I'm laughing, again, I'm sorry, I wish you guys were in the room with me right now. Oh, sorry, no gatherings of 10 or more. Um, <laughs> but like, there's a blizzard that's just about to move in. We still have sunshine right now, but the wind is coming in. It's going to be crazy. The weather's getting crazy. So I don't know, again, if this, if this wasn't making sense, let me know. We can have a further discussion about it. But I just, you know, my message here is to pay attention and to look around at, you know, we're being taught about our elderly. We're being, you know, very focused. All of a sudden, this brings up the question of child abuse domestic violence because people are being forced to stay home. We're being forced to look at that. We're being forced to look at where do we get selfish? PS, remember how I was so worried about the fact that I had to order disinfecting wipes in in bulk because that was the only thing that was on offer? I ordered that way 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 back and it never came. They just canceled it, which is fine. Uh the only reason why I didn't cancel it is because I didn't every time I try to cancel something, it just turns into mass confusion. I wanted to give them the chance to cancel it. And honestly, it eased my mind because as soon as I got that bulk, I was going to go out with like wipes under my arms and be like, elderly neighbors, do you need some? Um, nursing homes, do you want me to just like throw it at the door and I'll run away and you can come out and spray it down and then you can have them, you know. Um, but that ended up getting canceled anyway. So. <laughs> but what I'm getting at here is we're looking at where are we still very much in the me, me, me centric mentality. It's one thing to be uh, self-preserving and looking out for your family. That's one thing. But when you're hoarding so that nobody else can get what they need or where you're not leaving enough options uh, for people who can't afford the more expensive food, you know, we're being forced to look at this, guys, and it's not going to end. This is actually, uh, I know it doesn't seem this way, and this is a horrible thing, I guess, to say. I don't mean it like this, but, like, there is there's a, a helpful side to this. I know. If somebody got diagnosed with this, they're not going to see this as helpful, and my love and prayers to you. It, that's a given. By the way, I'm meditating every, every evening um, and, and praying and praying. I pray throughout the day. Every time I hear something happen to somebody, I stop and pray. And I pray from my heart, not my mind. Or not just my mind. Combo. Um, <laughs> having everything online with one another. Um, so, yeah, it's not like you're overlooked. But, you know, on the whole, for the people who are being affected in other ways, right? We're being asked to restructure our society. We're being asked to... Um, 
Look at our distractions. Oh yes, and some people are arguing that this is a distraction in and of itself, maybe from the elections here in the US, you know, that sort of thing. Um, eh, I, I don't, I mean, probably, maybe, uh, but I'm, I'm looking more at humans and how we interact with one another. And uh, I feel like I've been rambling in this video. I would try to edit this down. <laughs> So if you see a bunch of jump cuts, that's what I'm doing. I probably got on a long-winded thing. I'll, I'll cut it down as much as I can and as much as I can where it still makes sense. But um, if we don't learn to follow the example of people who are, you know, again, turning their restaurants into soup kitchens, even though they're going to lose a ton of money, they're stepping up. Um, you know, if we don't learn from people who are thinking of the elderly, they're thinking of the truck drivers and the nurses, the doctors, the first responders, um, you know what I mean? Like that's, that, those are the examples out there that we can observe and maybe vow to follow that. So for empaths, this is a big lesson time for us as well. And it's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of tough judgment calls where you're going to want to help people but you're also going to have, you're learning a hard lesson about discerning who could help themselves, but they're just taking advantage, trying to get a free reading out of you, trying to get you to do whatever, um, and, and who really needs the help, okay? Now, that's something that most of us would be trying to work through anyway. <laughs> uh, again, my inbox gets overloaded with people um, asking for readings or claiming they're not asking for a reading, but really they are asking for a reading and, you know, so on and so forth. And the unfortunate thing is, is that the beautiful comments, the ones that are super supportive, sometimes get washed out by all the other ones. Cause you know, I'm one per at least on my end, I'm just one person. I don't have a company of readers that I use. Um, I'm a sole proprietor. So every, I do my own filming. I do my own editing. I know you're sitting there going, yeah, no dumb, Michelle, because this is not fancy. I know. I watch other people's YouTube videos and I'm like, how'd you learn to edit like that? I wish I could edit like that because it'd be so funny if I could do this, that or the other. But, um, you know, everything is done on my own. So I don't have all the capacity to catch everything I'm trying. Um, but, you know, it can be difficult. So, you know, even in that sense, empaths are learning to form their own borders where you let all the love in, but you keep out the the vampires okay the energetic vampires you keep out people who you know again it's gonna be hard because the tricky part with this is that sometimes you do have somebody who comes along and they really do need help the point is that you know we're learning to set boundaries here um and still be helpful but be helping in the way that's the most efficient i will give you an example i saw it going around on facebook um, hey, everybody out there, if you need a box of cereal or whatever, just, you know, private message me. I'll give you whatever you need. Anybody who needs anything, you just message me um, and so on and so forth. And of course, I was tempted to share that and be like, uh, and then I was like, no, wait a minute. I'm going to have like 2000 people want a box of cereal that I can't even get a hold of. Right. What's a better way to help? Well, maybe there are organizations that have structure. <laughs> Or they have a system where they can, maybe they have better access. And maybe even if it's contributing, if you have some money and you can contribute money to cover the cost of food for people. Or I'll show up and, you know, I, I don't know what's the safest thing. I'll, if you got to put me in a little suit or whatever and help feed the kids, heck yeah, I'll help out. But we have to be smart about how we are contributing. Does that make sense? I think this will be it. I'm going to go off and record uh, a meditation. But again, let me know what you need down below. But be reasonable. Be compassionate. Remember, everyone is trying to be in this together. You know, well, let's just make it reasonable. Okay, so let me know what your thoughts are or what you want to see me talk about. Um, you know, I know a lot of people keep asking me to channel angels to see why this is happening. Guys, I sit down and make this content to let you know what's happening. Why do you think I sit in front of the camera and turn it on? It's because I'm getting messages that I'm supposed to spread on to you. So this is where we're at. All right. So we're going to leave it there. I am sending you all so much love. Stay calm. Stay safe. I love you. All right. Take care.